Actually, let's just try to solve by being clever at algebra. So I'll just write solve, and we're going to have a tough time with this one. I'll try to make it easy. That was not easy enough. How about minus one? That looks pretty easy. All right, so give this your best shot at solving. Test your algebra skills. See if you can get x by itself on one side. Oh, this doesn't work. So your algebra skills hopefully took you to here. You could at least get x into one place. So what did I do? What do we call these steps? Solving the square. Completing the square. So I took x from appearing twice to appearing once. What? So I took half the negative 2, which is negative 1. Mm -hmm. And then I, I also, so that's b over 2. I technically I didn't write. I got a little bit lazy. This guy should be that. So it'll still be negative but it's still, so I'm just going to square out to, um, oh, oh. to 1, but then I'm subtracting it. So there's three negative signs in it. All right, what next? Square root. You ever taken a square root with an inequality? No. No. Probably not successfully. So the plus or minus needs to go on the correct side. So I don't want to tell you which side is the correct side because I don't want you solving it this way. So this one was relatively straightforward to, uh, to solve. Actually, I will tell you which side it is. It actually is supposed to go on the side with the x's, not on the other side. Why? Yeah, that's confusing. It's a very good question. <laughs> All right, so this cancels out to x minus 1. Maybe we'll see why. Square root 2. All right, so this is going to make my brain hurt a little bit. So let's not solve it this way. So at the very last step, I'm either going to have to multiply by plus or minus 1 to get that plus minus out of here. This algebra was relatively easy to do as well. So <coughs> let's instead solve by graphing. So we're solved by graphing instead. I'm going to use the completed square version here. So solved by graphing, we're always going to do the same first step. Let f of x equal the left side. Graph the f of x function. So this is the regular happy parabola with a horizontal and a vertical shift. So it should be pretty fast to graph this guy.
So any questions on that graph? Shifting right, we got to go right one, down two. And we got the parabola. And I just used the three key points that we always use. There was no stretching, so those points didn't get stretched at all. They just got shifted. Now I'm going to shade in the part of the graph. So just rewriting this right here, that is f of x greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to shade in the parts of the graph that are above the x-axis or on the x-axis. So we get the two x-intercepts are good. And also the upper parts. So all I have to do to answer this question is describe what x values did I just shade in green. In order to do that, I need to get the two x-intercepts right there. The good news is the x-intercepts are pretty easy to get. We've done most of the algebra that we need. So we're going to find the x-intercepts, set 0 equal to f of x. And now I can square root with an equal sign. We get plus or minus square root 2 equals x minus 1. So x equals 1 plus or minus square root 2. So the one on the right is going to be 1 plus square root 2. The one on the left is 1 minus square root 2. So we're ready to line up the answer. All the x values that are above the x-axis are everything from negative infinity to 1 minus square root 2. Union from 1 plus square root 2 up to positive infinity. Now I need to be very careful about my end values. Am I allowed to include the x-intercepts? Yes. Yes, because it was less than or equal to. So that equal to means I include the two x-intercepts right there. And this will be the uh, x-values where this is above the x-axis.